How well do you talk? That may sound like a strange question, but it's a good question. And we're going to study that this morning. This is lesson number five in a series of spiritual wellness lessons. We need to examine our spiritual wellness concerning our service to God. And that's what we have been doing with these lessons. We have a checkup which included hearing, reading, praying, and singing. And now we're going to talk about talking. Jesus said that we should really take our speech seriously. We need to think about what Jesus tells us in everything we do. Because we will give an account of every idle word in that day of judgment. Matthew 12, verse 36. But I say unto you, for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. How much clearer could it be? You know, we really do need to be watching our speech because we are justified or condemned by our very words. Matthew 12, verse 37. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Pretty sobering thought, isn't it? Yes, indeed it is. It's a very sobering thought. For this reason, we ought to give careful thought concerning the words we use. It is imperative that our speech be in keeping with God's standards. So let me ask you, how well do you talk? Do you talk within God's standards? Or do you talk within the standards of the world? We'll take a look at that and see. There are certainly many ways that different people talk. <coughs> you know, there are a lot of people that are irreverent with their speaking. They are those who use the Lord's name in vain in violation of Exodus 20, verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. That is exhibited without the attitude of sincere respect. The Lord's name requires respect in all that we do. And one can be guilty of this in two different ways. Using the Lord's name in vain by swearing or cursing. Or using the Lord's name in vain by repetition of His name carelessly. Many people do this. It also applies to the name of Jesus. His name is to be held in highest of honor. Philippians 2, verse 9 through 11. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. And that name of Jesus every knee should bow. Those in heaven and those on earth and those that are under the earth. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so many people use that name just in everyday speech and especially in the entertainment world, in an ungodly manner. They never think about how they're utilizing God's name. They use it irreverently. There's also the evil way of using the name of God. Speaking words that are evil, according to 1 Peter 3, verse 10, for he who would love life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. These are evil ways of using words, such as lying words, 
Proverbs 6, verse 19. A false witness who spread lies and one who sows discord among the brethren. The Lord hates those things. Deceitful words. For those are such who deserve, who serve our Lord Jesus Christ, not but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. Romans 16, verse 18. Filthy words. Filthy words are used everywhere. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather that of giving of thanks. Ephesians 5, verse 4. Evil speaking also consists of speaking of other people in an evil way. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 10. You know, so many times, particularly today, there are people who talk evil about those in authority. You shall not revile God, nor curse a ruler of your people. How much clearer could that be? Likewise, also, these dreamers defile the flesh. They reject authority. They speak evil of dignitaries. Jude, verse 8. Exodus 22. Verse 28. What about those around us, everyday common people? You have heard it was said of those of old, you shall not murder, but whosoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever says to his brother Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Matthew 5, verses 21 and 22. Speaking evil of other people, those around us, those in authority. This is a common everyday speech thing, especially in business and politics. People speak evil. They also speak carelessly, don't they? They speak carelessly. The overuse of words. Speaking too often is one of the problems that James talked about. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. The proverb writer tells us, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his lips is wise. Proverbs 10, verse 19. Speaking too hastily is another careless way of speaking. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Proverbs 29, verse 20. And James 1, verse 19 says, so then, my brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. There are many people who carelessly misuse words. We know that that happens all the time, particularly where flattery is concerned. Psalms 12, verses 1 through 4. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for faith disappears from among the sons of men. They speak idly, everyone to his neighbor. With flattering lips and a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongues that speak proud things, who have said, With our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? These people thought that their lips controlled everything, what they said and what they had to do. It tells us in Romans 16, verse 18, For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Of course, we know about rash, rash oaths that people make from time to time. 
looking at Matthew 33 verses uh, 33 Matthew 5 verse 33 through 37 again you have heard that it was said of old you shall not swear falsely but you shall perform your oath to the Lord but I say to you do not swear at all neither by heaven for it is God's throne nor by the earth for it is his footstool nor by Jerusalem for it is the city of the great king nor shall you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair white or black let your yes be yes and your no be no for whatever is more than these is from the evil one but above all my brethren do not swear either by heaven or by earth do not swear by heaven or by earth or with any other oath let your yes be yes and your no be no lest you fall into judgment it ought to be very clear to us that swearing is definitely wrong there are a lot of unwholesome words that people use let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers Ephesians 4 verse 29 what about euphemism euphemisms are included in this most people don't think much about euphemism at all what is a euphemism well it is an offensive expression substituted for one considered offensive one inoffensive expression substituted for one considered offensive if you don't want to say a dirty word you put something else in there that makes it a euphemism some examples are words such as darn or shoot or golly or gee or whatever you say gee whiz instead of Jesus Christ that's using his name in vain to do that so what's wrong with these expressions they mean the same thing as a more offensive word and you would not use that in public or in private so you use a euphemism instead it's the same wrongful emotion behind the euphemism or its equivalent replacement euphemisms are not part of our speech they reflect an attitude contrary to the spirit of Christian conduct let all bitterness wrath anger clamor evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you Ephesians 4 verses 31 and 32 it's very common in everyday speech today even among many Christians many times I have caught a Christian by the pointing the finger at him saying you shouldn't be using those euphemisms but still they do it's kind of a hard habit to break but it needs to be broken there's also the gracious way of speaking the good way those whose speech leads to edification of those around them that encourages the building up of Christians Ephesians 4 verse 29 let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers Ephesians 4 verse 29 you know that which extends grace to others is also required Colossians 4 verse 6 let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one all of our speech should express thankfulness to the Lord for all the blessings that he has bestowed upon us it is fitting for Saints to do this but fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness let it not even be named among you as it's fitting for Saints neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting 
which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. We need to express thankfulness to God for all the blessings that He exposes, He gives us. You know, we need an attitude of gratitude. You've probably heard that statement before. An attitude of gratitude for our saints. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints of light. Colossians 1 verse 12. Nothing is befitting a saint when he's complaining. You know, we hate to hear saints complain, but they do from time to time. The scripture tells us, do all things without complaining and disputing. Philippians 2 verse 14. But the gracious person will not be complaining in such manners as we see here. The gracious words are uncommon in everyday speech among Christians. And that's the way that it should be. You know, we aspire to become gracious talkers. That's what God wants us to do, isn't it? He does. He wants us to. Besides being judged by our words in the day of judgment, we need to think about being gracious. But I say unto you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Consider some more reasons for the importance of proper talking. Let's think about that for a bit. Words reveal what's in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, according to Matthew 12, verse 34. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. John the Baptist knew what he was talking about, didn't he? Speech reveals the sort of treasures that we have stored in our hearts. Matthew 12, verse 35. A good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, brings forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. Matthew 12, verse 35. Have you considered your words, what they reveal about you, as you go through your daily life? How's your talking today? Is it well? Is it in a godly manner? You know, words often hurt other people. Lying and flattery can be destructive. <coughs> Proverbs 26, verse 28. Gossip and strife destroy friendship. Proverbs 16, 27, 28, and 17, verse 9. An ungodly man digs up evil, and on his lips like a burning fire, a perverse man sows strife, and whispers separate the best of friends. He who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates friends. Proverbs 17, verse 9. You know, neighborly relations can be destroyed by that tongue. Speaking evil and hurting other people. The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. Proverbs 11, verse 9. The tongue can indeed be a destructive and powerful poison, according to James 3, verses 5 through 8. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. James 3, verses 5 and 6. No man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. James 3, verse 8. 
Remember that little childhood ditty? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words can hurt. They can and do drive people away from Christ. Words hurt other people. Words can also bless other people to the contrary of what we were just talking about. By cooling down a heated conversation, sometimes you get in an argument. Somebody needs to step down, step in and move it out. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15, verse 1. It's also good for comforting those who are anxious. Anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. But a good word makes it glad. Proverbs 12, verse 25. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul, health to the bones, Proverbs 16, verse 24. We can delight those who hear us. We don't have to speak evil to them or about them. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth, a word spoken in due season, how good it is. Proverbs 15, verse 23. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Proverbs 25, verse 11. You know, by offering grace to the hearers, we do well. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and necessary for edification that it may impart grace, impart grace to the hearer. That's our desire, to bless other people with that grace. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Colossians 4, verse 6. How do our words impart grace to the hearers? Depends on how we speak, doesn't it? What we have to say. The potential for much harm, but there's also a potential for much good in the same manner. We need to take our speech seriously. With that in mind, here are some steps to better talking. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what he told us in Matthew 12, verses 34 through 35. Also, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. Proverbs 4, verse 23. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Guard your heart. You know, as often said today, garbage in, garbage out. That's what they teach you in computer classes. If you don't put it in right, it won't come out right. The same applies here. You put garbage in your heart, you're going to get garbage out. Be careful what you allow into your heart and into your mind. That's how you guard your heart so that you will be better talking. Also, guard your lips. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs 13, verse 3. Back when I was a police officer, I found that most people were caught because they had to open their mouth and tell somebody what they had done. And of course, it led to their arrest. He who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs 13, verse 3. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. Proverbs 21, verse 23. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Ephesians 4, verse 29. You want to impart grace to the hearer. Be careful what you allow to come out of your mouth. And you'll be a much godlier talking individual. Think before you speak. You know, the heart of the righteous studies how to answer. 
but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. Proverbs 15, verse 28. Napoleon Hill said, Think twice before you speak, because your words and influence will plant the seed of either success or failure in the mind of others. How true that statement is. I also like what Rainbow Jangles had to say. Think before you speak. You might need to remember what you just said. From time to time, things you say will come back to bite you. They will hurt you. Give thought as to the consequences of what you say before you say it. Also, pray about your speech. You have trouble with it? Pray about it. Set a guard, O oh Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door to my lips. Psalms 141, verse 3. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalms 19, verse 14. Pray that the Lord will help you speak with grace and kindness to other people not with evil speaking and irreverent speaking and careless speaking. You know, we should never forget the power of speech. It will hurt others and it will also hurt ourselves. It will bless others and it will bring glory to God. As we examine our spiritual well-being, let us not only give attention to how well we hear and read and pray and sing, but let's also give prayerful attention to how well we talk when we talk to our other people and out loud in public, wherever. May the prayer of David be our own. Let every word of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalms 19, verse 14. In our next spiritual wellness checkup, it will be how well do you give how well do you give we'll talk about that this evening you know the Lord has a plan of salvation hear the word so faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God but once you hear it you have to believe it if you fail to believe it you're just as lost as if you had never heard it therefore I say unto you you will die in your sins for if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. John 8, verse 24. Repent of your sins. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Faith alone is not sufficient. You must confess that Jesus is the Christ. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 verses 9 and 10. Then you must be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. So now why are you waiting? Arise, be baptized, wash away your sins. Calling on the name of the Lord. Acts 22, verse 16. The invitation is yours while we stand and sing.